Hey guys, today what we're going to be doing is looking at square roots. So essentially what we are doing is we are going to be given an area of a square and to find, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to try to find the side length. So for instance, if the area of a square is a hundred, in order to find the side length, what we do is take uh, what we call the square root. And essentially what that is, is we need to find two numbers that are exactly the same that multiply to 100, which is 10. Therefore, each side length is 10, because 10 times 10 is 100. So let's go ahead and look at uh, more examples that we'll see. We're going to see a lot bigger numbers. Now, like I said, um, we are going to be giving the area of this rectangle, excuse me, of the square, which is 1600. And I need to find two numbers that are exactly the same that multiply to 1600. Now, some of us might not know right off the top of our heads what that is. So what we are going to do is what uh, called prime factorization, and we are going to break this down into all of its numbers. So two numbers that multiply to 1600 is 116. Two numbers that multiply to 100 is 10 and 10. Two numbers that multiply to 16 is 4 and 4. Now, we can stop right here because I notice we have one pair. So I'm going to pull out a 10 and a 10. But if you notice, we also have a second pair of these 4s. So a 4 would go here and a 4 would go here. Any pairs that we have that we pull out, we're going to multiply. Is going to uh, Any pair that we pull out, we are going to multiply together. So 10 times 4 is 40. Therefore, when I asked what is the side length, it is 40. So the square root of 1600 is 40. Now what we're going to do is we can look at this with variables. So all this is saying is I have 121 b to the 8th as my area, and I need to figure out what are my side lengths again. So two numbers that multiply to 121, that is a perfect square, so two sides are 11. 11 times 11 is 121. Now the tricky part, guys, is the b to the 8th. If we just looked at b to the 8th, remember we're looking for pairs, and there would be 8 of them in here. So if I looked at pairs, I would have 1, 2, 3, 4 pairs. So that means I would have b to the 4th power on both of these. Okay, um, another easier way to do this is whatever the number is inside the square root. If it's a square root, we're looking for groups of two. You can just divide the exponent of a variable by two, and that will be the number on the outside. That's how many pairs you will have. All right, so let's go ahead and look at 324 a squared b to the 10th. So if the squares help you, I'll continue drawing them. I like using them. You don't need to if you feel comfortable without them. But it's basically saying I have 324 a squared b to the 10th, and I am looking for uh, the side lengths of these. So the first thing what we're going to do is I want to figure out uh, numbers that multiply to 324. So when we're not sure, let's just think of the easiest number, and I would think that is 2. So if I divide that by 2, it's just 2 and 162. And I'm just going to keep dividing this by 2. So this is then 2 and 81. And then we have 9 and 9. Now we could continue to break this down to uh, 3 and 3 and 3 and 3. But we can actually stop right here because if we look, remember, we're always looking for pairs. And I have a pair here. And so I would bring out a 2 and I brought out a 2. If you noticed I had two nines, you could stop right there. But let's say we got stuck and we didn't notice that. I have a three and a three, and the nine also breaks down to a three and three. So I would only look at my prime numbers, which consisted of the twos and each pair of threes. Okay. And to color code these, let me go ahead and switch the colors up. All right, so now what we would do is I would remember anything you bring out, you're going to multiply with each other. So what do I mean by that? I have one pair of threes, so I'm going to put times three, times three, that's where those are. And then on the other one, I have a, another pair of threes, which is times three, times three. So right here now, I have three times three, which is nine, times two is 18. So therefore, the side length 
of this is 18. But we have one other part. We have the uh, exponents here. Now you could write uh, this out like a times a. So if I had the square root of a squared, that is equal to the square root of a times a. I have one pair, so I can bring out an a. And then the last part, uh, I really don't want to write out 10 b's. So b times b times b. I really don't want to do that. But remember, I'm looking for groups of 2, so all I need to do is divide by 2. And uh, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So this would be b to the fifth power. So my final answer of the square root of 324 a squared b to the 10th would be 18 a b to the 5th. And this is my final answer. Okay. All right, now fractions can be a little tricky. You never want to take the square root of just a frac of just a decimal. You want to turn it into a fraction. So the first thing what we're going to do is this number is 36 hundredths. You're always going to put that number as a fraction. Whatever the decimal is, write it as a fraction. So we have 36 over 100. Whenever you are taking the square root of a fraction, all you do is take the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. So the square root of 36 is just 6, and the square root of 100 is 10. And then your last step is you see if you can reduce. You can reduce these both by 2. So that would be 3 over 5 as your final answer. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this one. I'm not quite sure what the square root of 1,764 is. So all we're going to do is we're going to bring out a calculator and we're going to make a factor tree, which means we're going to continue breaking it down until we know uh, we can figure out what my square roots are. So if I do 164, that's an even number. All I'm going to do is divide it by 2. So then I'm going to have 2 and 882, and then I'm going to divide 882 by 2. So that's going to be 2 and 4, 4, 1. Now I'm not sure what uh, 4, 4, 1 is divisible by. So if I try, let's say, 7, yeah, that works. So that would be 7 and 63. And so then two numbers that multiply to 63 is 7 and 9. And then two numbers that multiply to 9 are 3 and 3. Now we only care about the prime numbers. Prime numbers are numbers that are divisible by 1 and itself. So that's like 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, so on and so forth. Those are what prime numbers are. So I'm only focusing on these numbers. And we are going to pull out um, my pairs. So one more time, if this is my rectangle, excuse me, if this is my square, and it had an area of 1764b to the 6th power. And I pulled out a 2. I pulled out a 7. And I pulled out a 3. 2 times 7, uh, excuse me, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 7 is 42. Okay, so we're almost done. We still have to take care of b to the sixth power. Remember, I'm looking for pairs. So if I have six of them, I have one, two, three pairs, which means I would have b to the third power right here and b to the third power right here. Okay? All right, guys, that's all for square roots. I hope this helped. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or your teacher.